In this video, I will show you how to make this pipeline using scripts, tasks, jobs, and stages. I will explain the difference between all of these concepts and I will leave timestamps below in case you want to skip around. In the previous video, we made this pipeline with two tasks, which builds and pushes a Docker image to Docker Hub. If we look at the structure of this pipeline, we see it has uh, steps and then uh, two tasks, both of them of type Docker. A task is a built-in instruction from Azure, which performs one action. So uh, a task is a type of step, but another type of step is a script. So uh, they are on the same level. And I can achieve exactly the same thing with a script by writing the following. So now the task docker and this script do exactly the same thing. So why would I use any of them for my situation? Well, uh, the advantage of the built-in tasks from Azure is that they come with some extra features, um, for example, some input validation, some logging. So if something doesn't go well with this task, then you can nicely debug it in uh, the UI from Azure DevOps. While the script is more uh, raw, so yeah, here I can uh, also do other things. I can do, I don't know, I can log in to Azure, I can write Python script, so it's much more flexible. Whereas the Docker task only allows me to do things related to Docker. Actually, it's uh, better to use task if, it, uh, if the functionality that you want to achieve is already coming with one of these in built-in tasks. But if the command that you want to run is not supported by the built-in tasks, then you should go for the script. This was the difference between tasks and scripts. And now let's move on to jobs. In this pipeline, we have steps and tasks and scripts, but we do not have any jobs. Um, however, if we, if we run this pipeline, So if we run this pipeline, we see that um, it actually has one job here. And uh, this is because we cannot run tasks or scripts in Azure DevOps, but only jobs. So jobs are the smallest unit which can be run on uh, Azure pipelines. So even if we didn't explicitly define a job, this pipeline does have one job, which contains steps. So we can also uh, explicitly define it like this. So now if we go back, um, we can see that uh, we gave a name to our job. So uh, why do we need jobs? Um, in real life scenario, it is impractical to have this long list of tasks and scripts and it makes more sense to group them together based on whatever logic they are responsible for. And uh, it also allows us to have more flexibility on the pipeline. Imagine I want to test the build and push both on a Linux machine and on a Mac. And uh, now all of my uh, tasks are happening on a Linux. So I cannot uh, do this. But with jobs, you can assign different VMs for different jobs. So I can have one job which is gonna do build and push on uh, Linux. And then I can have another job, which is doing a build and push on a, on a Mac. So this is one super nice thing about jobs. And another advantage of jobs is that uh, we can run them in parallel. So this build push on Linux is not dependent on uh, build push on Mac. So I can uh, set them to run in parallel and optimize my pipeline. Uh, now, if I run this, they will run uh, sequentially. But um, yeah, we can just check what it looks like. So uh, yeah, now these jobs uh, appear one after another and they will be executed sequentially. Stage is something that goes above job. And um, similar to jobs, we don't have to define explicitly a stage 
because uh, if we do not specify it, then our pipeline contains by default one stage. And this we can see in uh, the runs from here. So in stages, we see that the, the pipeline had one stage and uh, it succeeded. Similar to the jobs, we can explicitly define it by writing stages and then uh, a stage with a name. Uh, actually, I'm wrong. Uh, we cannot see it in the interface because it's only one stage. And uh, that uh, brings me to the next point, which is uh, why do we even need stages? Um, because it looks like Jobs already is doing what, like this uh, grouping based on logic of uh, different tasks. And uh, a very nice feature from stages is that uh, it allows us to see the pipeline in a, with the UI. And what I mean by this is that uh, here we have the jobs and however many jobs we will add here. And however they are dependent on each other, there will always be one list here, which is not the best way to visualize a pipeline. And uh, if we add two stages, then uh, let me show you that it looks much prettier. So now we see here that um, we added a second stage and uh, we can also see it displayed uh, like this, which I personally prefer much better than uh, just the list of jobs. But when we click on one, again, we can see all the jobs that are inside of that stage. A stage is a phase of our development process and it's a logical grouping of jobs. So a phase could be pre-deployment or deployment or security scanning and using stages allows us to have a better flow of the pipeline. Let me now add a few more stages here uh, to show you what I mean. So I copy pasted some code to spare some time, but uh, here we have a few stages, uh, a build stage followed by a pre-deployment stage, which depends on build. So this will not start unless uh, this uh, passes. Then uh, we have a security stage with no dependencies. So uh, in theory, we could run uh, the security and the build stage in parallel. Um, and then the deployment stage, which depends on security, the same thing. It will not uh, start unless the security passes. So uh, we can uh, add it here and see what it looks like. This is what the pipeline looks like. And um, yeah, it will successfully finish because it's only printing random things. But uh, yeah, this is it. So knowing the difference between all of these concepts helps us to make pipelines that are easy to follow and not overly complicated. I hope this video helped you. Thank you a lot for watching. Um, next time I want to talk about Azure pipeline templates, which is another way of structuring pipelines. I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.